across the board. City staff estimates Corpus Christi has missed out on nearly $1.6 million in occupancy taxes between July 2017 and June 2019. The state began collecting that tax two years ago, and several cities have since followed suit. In Corpus Christi, Taxes on short-term rentals can generate $60,000 a month, but District 4 City Councilman Greg Smith thinks that's a conservative number. We're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, it, much, much more than $60,000, and every quarter that amount grows. It is a v exploding business. That's money which can be put back into the city to attract more visitors. Primarily is to market the city. And the whole idea of hotel tax is to put heads in beds. And if it doesn't achieve that goal, then you really can't spend it on there. However, short-term rentals less than 30 days are still technically banned by city code. We need to change our ordinance to reflect that. Uh, the community is saying so. So this is just a step, but it is not our end. Now, District 4 City Councilman Greg Smith says city staff is working on a new short-term rental ordinance. He expects it to go before the council sometime next year. Katya. All right, Greg, thanks. And Tuesday is going to be the first time that these tax agreements go before the council. They are on the consent agenda, which means a faster vote. Still, Councilman Smith expects a lot of discussion before that vote. And a 19 year old was arrested after police accused him of posting a school threat on social media. CCISD police say that Nathaniel Salinas is charged with making a terroristic threat. Salinas allegedly posted a message on Facebook saying that he was going to shoot up Grant Middle School. School officials learned of the threat late yesterday and sent out a letter to parents. As a precaution, the school was placed on partial lockdown today. No outdoor activities were allowed and there were increased police patrols near the campus. The security measures were lifted after Salinas was arrested. Employees at two local businesses were left with a huge cleanup job today. Look at all that. Believe it or not, all this construction happened when someone drove a stolen truck through the front of the Mr. Nice Guy shop on the 10,000 block of Leopard. It was happening just before 5 this morning. Now, the truck didn't just smash through the front entrance. It actually plowed all the way inside and crashed into the back wall. Several CBD products were taken. There's no word on how long repairs will take. Now, about an hour later, the stolen truck burglar struck again, and this smash and grab happening at the Family Dollar Store on the 3700 block of Leopard near Up River Road. Again, the truck was used to smash through the front entrance. The thieves tried to steal a safe, but they were not successful. The truck was later found abandoned in Robstown. No arrest has been made in either one of those store break ins. And the suspect in the El Paso Walmart mass shooting says he's not guilty. 21 year old Patrick Crucius made his first court appearance since his arrest on August 3rd. Crucius killed 22 people and injured 25 others in a mass shooting at the Walmart. He entered a not guilty plea during his arraignment today, but El Paso police say that he confessed to the shooting. He reportedly told investigators he was targeting Mexicans. Crucius is facing the death penalty. Federal authorities are also considering capital murder and hate crime charges. The Department of Justice has called the shooting an act of domestic terrorism. Well, if you were in the burning building, w would you know how to get out? Uh, I don't know about that, but the Corpus Christi Fire Department today using a demonstration to make sure that people know how to save their lives in case of a fire. Our Catherine McGinty has the story. That's a sound you don't want to wake up to, but if you do. So once that smoke alarm goes off, you only have about two minutes to get out. And with so little time, having a plan could save your life. Draw out. Your, your home, take your kids and show them two ways out of each room and then practice it. According to the National Fire Protection Association, only one of three American households have actually developed and practiced a fire escape. That's why Corpus Christi firefighters held a demonstration on the Del Mar West campus to show how to escape a smoke filled room. The first step, get down low. Smoke and heat rise. So if you're standing up, you can have temperatures of 1,000 degrees, which is not tenable. You, you'll die in that. Crawl toward your primary exit and check the door with the back of your hand. If it's hot, then you, that tells you that's an indication that there's fire on the other side and you're not going to be able to go out that way. Also, choose a location outside of your home to meet up in case of an emergency. In the meantime, firefighters say to test smoke detectors on a weekly basis. They all have a test button on them. And on this one, as you can see, it's right here. And all you do is push it and hold it. 
Catherine McGinty. Chris 6 News. All right, now listen, the Corpus Christi Fire Department will install smoke detectors free of charge for any city resident. And October is a perfect time to brush up on fire safety because it happens to be National Fire Prevention Month. It is. Well, two potential witnesses in the impeachment inquiry have been arrested. Yeah, they're accused of making illegal campaign contributions, and they are identified as associates of the president's personal lawyer. And today felt like summer with record setting heat and temperatures in the mid 90s this afternoon. Right now, our CCRV weather bug camera shows 89 over at Suntine at 37. Pretty breezy outside and warm at the bayfront. Our first community bank weather bug camera showing that as well. Our high today hit 95 degrees and broke the old record set back in 2012. In a few minutes, I'll tell you how low temperatures go and be back to tell you all about it. Chris 6 News is brought to you by NAC Co-op Energy, your not-for-profit electricity source for home and business. Now, Chris 6 News at 6 continues. Welcome back, everyone. Two potential witnesses in the impeachment inquiry have been arrested. Yeah, the men are both foreign-born associates of President Trump's personal lawyer, Judy, uh, Rudy Giuliani, I should say. Now, they are accused of making illegal campaign contributions to help the president. Lev Parnas and Igor Furman are preparing to leave the country on one-way tickets when they were arrested at Dulles International Airport in Virginia. Now, today's charges are not directly connected to the impeachment inquiry. Federal investigators say the men sought to use foreign money to gain political influence. The American people expect and deserve an election process that has not been corrupted by the influence of foreign interests, and the public has a right to know the true source of campaign contributions. The two men face up to 35 years in prison if they are convicted. Now, Rudy Giuliani has previously said both men helped him in his dealings with Ukraine, including encouraging the country to investigate Joe Biden and his son. And now to breaking news in the impeachment inquiry. Three House Representatives committees have issued a subpoena for documents from Energy Secretary Rick Perry. Perry is being asked to hand over documents related to the sequence of events behind the White House decision to withhold critical military assistance to Ukraine. Now, this is the ninth subpoena issued by House Democrats since Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced the impeachment inquiry.
Now, Turkey has stepped up its assault against U.S. allied Kurdish forces in northern Syria. The region was pounded with airstrikes and artillery for a second day in a row. Turkey is attacking Kurdish forces who helped the U.S. defeat ISIS. Turkey sees them as terrorists. They plan to create a 20-mile buffer zone in northern Syria. The United Nations Refugee Agency says tens of thousands of civilians are fleeing the war zone. Some civilian deaths have also been confirmed. If Nueces County can meet a goal that was set just today, it's going to mean tens of millions more in federal funding. Community groups celebrated their upcoming efforts to get more people to participate in the 2020 census. The Bureau urges you to answer the census, saying the information that you put on, on the form will never be used against you. The information is confidential. By the U.S. Constitution, it mandates that it is. The court of law cannot uh, open up that information. And the last nationwide population count in 2010 only saw 71% of people who live in Nueces County take part. The county lost an estimated $200 million in federal funding because of the 29% who did not participate. And this year, you're able to fill out the census over the phone but and even online. Well, there's one fact about breast cancer that you may not know. Sure, it's a disease that also affects men. You're going to hear from one male survivor coming up right after the break. SPID. Welcome back, everyone. The nationwide vaping health crisis is getting worse. More cases of vaping related to lung injuries have now been reported. The CDC says that there are now nearly 1,300 confirmed and probable cases. That is an increase of more than 200 cases from last week. The number of deaths has now climbed to 27. And one of those deaths is reported here in Texas. Alaska is the only state that has no reported cases. Meanwhile, October is Breast Cancer Awareness month and there's one fact about this disease that's not really widely known and it doesn't just affect women it also affects men and they can be diagnosed with breast cancer each year one in every 833 men is diagnosed with breast cancer in the u.s it has the same symptoms as in women usually a lump or enlarged lymph node underneath the arm now that's how one man discovered he had the disease when i was driving seat belt goes across here and my right breast kept getting very tender and sore. So I felt up there and I had a lump. Mm. 
The stigma of a man with breast cancer can cause some men to put off going to the doctor. Also, support groups for men are not as common. As for Mr. Schneider, he tells us that he is now cancer free. Absolutely, it's great. And Mr. Snyder celebrates his 77th birthday on October 19th. Yes, he's going to celebrate by taking part in a special event, right? That's right. Now, the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk, sponsored by the American Cancer Society and Chris Six. The walk is on October 19th, his birthday, and begins at Bayfront Park. It helps raise funds in the fight against breast cancer. For more details on Making Strides Walk and how you can participate, go to chris6cares.com. And another initiative making a difference during Breast Cancer Awareness Month is Real Men Wear Pink of Corpus Christi. I've been selected uh, to represent Chris Six as an ambassador for Real Men Wear Pink. And I'm not only raising awareness for breast cancer, but I'm also raising money. And if you want to join in the fight, go to Chris6Cares.com. Look for my page and place a small donation. All the money raised, get this, stays right here in the Coastal Bend. Six Weather is brought to you by Aztec Chevrolet in Beeville. Visit AztecAutoplex.com. Now, the most accurate weather forecast in South Texas with Chief Meteorologist Dale Nelson. All righty, here is your Aztec Chevrolet forecast. And boy, our sky cam on SPID showing the beautiful sky conditions. But that uh, crystal clear sky with all that sunshine induced a record high of 95 today. We won't see that again this year. I think we're done with the heat as far as 95 goes. We might still get to 90, but not 95. Satellite and radar shows crystal clear skies as well. And that means the evening forecast looks terrific but warm and uh, very August-like with 89 degrees now. It'll be 86 at 7 o'clock, 81 at midnight. The winds come down. Our temperatures will slip into the 70s then as uh, we approach daybreak, but it will be a quiet evening overnight. We'll be warm and sticky and 78 at 7. Things start to happen mid-morning. We'll reach the high tomorrow here in Corpus Christi about 11 a.m. We'll be at around 86. We'll be at about 84 with scattered thunder showers at noon. Notice the wind shift out of the north-northeast and picking up through the afternoon, windy and much cooler, 75 by 5 p.m. But during the football games tomorrow night, it's not going to be in the 70s. It's going to be in the 50s. And uh, we've been used to 80s during Friday night football, and that's not going to happen this week. It's going to be dramatically different because of this cold front that is angling southward, causing severe weather in the Missouri River Valley tonight. But it's not cooler, it's colder air coming in behind this. And although it's not a direct shot at the coastal bend, it's still going to be felt here. Water vapor imagery, marginal moisture still dry now. That's why the blue skies, there's the moisture buildup. So we'll see some rainfall activity, but not a lot. Don't expect a lot of rain out of this, so you'll be disappointed. Western areas may not get any rain at all in the coastal bend. This big low, though, is going to be a major winter storm for the upper Midwest, even though it's still only October. And uh, that'll be driving the cool air into this position. It'll ease southward. Then it'll fight it out with the upper level high that'll be back with us on Monday, Columbus Day. And that'll bring a few rain showers back into the region on Monday and the latter part of next week. Look at the temperatures. They're below freezing across the northern plains, including 26 in Denver, 51 right now in Amarillo, while it's 90 in Dallas. You can see where the front is right in through here. Lubbock's got 67, but Midland at 92. It's 100 in Laredo. So the next cold front is the strongest one we've seen in uh, six months, going back to the 15th of April. Much cooler and less humid behind the front. Scattered thunder showers along and ahead of it. But again, not a lot of rain. The future winds, you can see how they lay in the morning, producing mid-70s. Northern areas of the coastal bend will see the front in the morning up around Beeville and George West, and then pushing through the city by 2 o'clock and clearing the coastal bend after that. The winds are still blowing here on Saturday morning. And your NEC Co-op Energy 7-day forecast, 75 tonight, 85 tomorrow, 55, and just 71 here for the high on Saturday. Can you believe that? and then 58 and 80 on Sunday, Columbus Day. The warm air starts to return, we'll pick up a few showers, and then more humid and warmer again. 90 on Tuesday, 91 on Wednesday behind the next front, which is gonna be weak. This one is strong, the next one is weak. All right, we'll take both. That's all right, we'll take them all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Dale. Well, high school football takes center stage tonight at Buck Stadium. Veterans Memorial takes on the Moody Trojans. Allen is gonna have a preview right after this quick timeout.
Uh, Mic test. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Tonight. Well, I'm going to be on the Coastal Living Show in the morning, and you know McLovio is going to be on the show, and he's probably going to mention the weather. I hope he's accurate. He's out of town. Hope he, hope he, he's not here. Oh, he's not here? What's that? That's why, that's oh, why he, so he won't be that's here? That's why he told you that, because he doesn't have to defend it. Uh. Hey, Paulo, did you ever get your tacos? 